Hey, I hope everyone's having a great day and welcome to the Shop Fix channel, a community joined together for the love of woodworking. In today's video, I want to teach you how to inlay wood into picture frames like I did here with this walnut inlay. This particular picture frame was a present for my wife and I's anniversary. Working. For this particular picture frame, I thought it'd be really neat if I inlaid some walnut into the pine frame. To accomplish this, the first task is obviously to mill and square up this inlay lumber that I'm using, which is a nice piece of walnut. It was fairly bowed, so I had to cut off the end so I can get a straight piece to work with. After cross cutting this piece of walnut to size, I took it over and clamped it on my table saw workstation and cut it out with this circular saw and a straight edge to get a nice straight edge on the piece of walnut so that I can run it through the jointer and table saw safely and accurately. Once I had an accurate straight edge on this piece of walnut, I headed over to the table saw to get the other half of the live edge cut off. Now as you can see it's still kind of bowed so I had to kind of work it through there and make sure that I kept the board flat as I pushed it through. To finish this milling process on this piece of walnut, I needed to adjust my fence back to fit the whole board. When positioning an adjustable fence such as this, make sure that you reference it with a square so you know that it's perfect 90 degree angle. Keep in mind that the step that I'm performing right now, actually milling this walnut up for the inlay, is one of the most critical steps in creating a perfect inlay because the more accurate that you mill this lumber, the better it's going to sit in that inlay that you create in your frame. Now the last step of this milling process is setting the thickness to the correct inlay depth. So if you want to do a half inch inlay, kind of like I'm doing here, then you're just going to plane the lumber down to a half an inch. After milling, this piece of walnut looked incredibly beautiful. And so the next step is just marking where I want the inlay to be within my frame. Here's how the inlay looks after cutting them out. Now let me show you how I accomplished this on the table saw. The first step in cutting an accurate inlay out on the table saw is to make sure that you have your blade adjusted to the height of the depth of the inlay and then you want to adjust that table saw cut to cut just inside the inlay piece and that'll be your first pass. Now alternatively you could use a dado stack if you have one available instead of cutting out multiple curves or you can also use a router table if you're not doing such a large depth like a half an inch. If you're only going about fourth inch in the wood you can easily use a router table if it's accurate. Now, the reason I'm cutting this groove out the way I am on the table saw without a dado sack is A, my table saw can't house a dado sack, and B, my router table isn't as accurate as this method, so I'd rather use this method. One of the best benefits in using the table saw method is that you can adjust the gap to any measurement, and you don't have to rely on the measurement of a router bit or a dado stack and you can actually adjust the position of that final pass to make sure that your inlay will fit perfectly and snugly in that gap that you create. Once your inlay groove is cut out within your picture frames, you'll want to cut out the inlay piece to match that exact measurement of the grooves that you just created so it fits really snug.
Now, before you rip all of the pieces that you need, I'd recommend testing that first piece, and making sure it fits like you intended it to before cutting out the rest. As you watch this video, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to the ShopFix channel if you haven't already. Thanks for your support. Let's continue by finishing this rip cut and then taking our inlay pieces of walnut and fitting them in to the slots we just created in the pine frame to test fit everything out. If you followed the steps that I outlined, you should get a perfect result with a very snug fit. And then all you'd have to do is wipe off all the dust that you've created and then simply glue the inlay into the pine frame. Once you have a generous amount of wood glue inside the gap, you just wanna spread it around with a Q-tip or something similar and then inlay your piece into the groove. One thing I'd like to mention here is that I created the inlay groove just shallow enough that the inlay piece would rest a little bit above the surface so that when I clamped it on, the clamps could actually come into contact with the inlay board and actually get it really tight into that groove. And you could see all the glue coming now as I tighten that down. Once these inlay pieces dry, we can remove the clamps and go on to the next step of this perfect inlay process. And we've completed most of the steps. However, one of the most important aspects at the very end is to cut an accurate miter and align the inlay pieces together perfectly. When I'm cutting 45 degree miters, I often use a 45 degree stop block with a clamp to get an accurate miter as well as length for both sides. Now, the reason that I'm concentrating so much about getting the measurement right on this picture frame is because it's gonna house a 16 by 20 backer board and plexiglass, so I have to make sure it fits perfectly. Well, after getting that 45 degree stop block mounted and getting all lined up, it's time to cut it out. Now I'll simply adjust the stop block to cut out the other sides of the frame. Notice how I feed the blade into the wood at a very slow pace. I do this because A, I'm using a fine tooth finishing blade that can't cut wood as fast as a construction blade and B, it lessens the chance of a tear out. Well, with all the 45 degree miters cut out, we can assemble the frame all together. My last recommendation is when gluing up your frame, make sure you concentrate on lining up those inlays perfect. Well, that about wraps up today's video, but I really hope you enjoyed this ShopFix content. If you did, smash that like button and subscribe to the ShopFix channel if you haven't already. Well, as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, have fun with your ShopFix.